Hello and welcome to another video and in this week's video I'm going to talk about 10 tips for communicating with remote staff. Obviously in, line, in our line of business that means virtual assistants but in this day and age it's many many businesses working with offices all over the place perhaps outsourcing to individuals through freelancer people per hour or indeed agencies like ours and putting together whole teams of people working across the globe. So it's an increasingly common way of working and this is also relevant for people within your own organisation that perhaps work in another office. Now when we take a new client on board we send out a series of onboarding emails and one of the things I've noticed from at least from open rates is the one about communication is the most read so I think it's sort of pertinent at least to kind of cover some of these things off in a video so without further ado here are 10 tips for communicating with remote staff. Number one, do list all your tasks on some platform. So, for example, we use as standard Asana, which is really, really good. Great for task management, great for following tasks, for adding them, creating a project and having subtasks and for assigning to different people in the team or just one person. You can also communicate there. Obviously, um, there are many others as well. Trello is another one which we use or our clients like to use quite a lot with their assistants. Um, and there are others, and I'll try and drop a few links also to those at the bottom of this, but that's the first thing. Secondly, if you require something booking, um, if you require something sort of researching and booking like travel arrangements or, or the setting up of the meeting and stuff like that, mention exact times and dates and give um, some sort of exact options. There's a great blog post by Tim Ferriss here where he's actually talking about communicating with a VA um, and he gives the perfect kind of guidelines, almost like a little template on how to do that. And I will uh, link to that as well. But I also, uh, we also have our own template, which I'll also give, uh, uh, put on the blog post associated with this video to download. Third thing, if you require research, for example, on the like sort of database research, online lead research, or perhaps you need to put together a list of, of um, competitors, whatever it kind of may be when you want someone to go and do a bunch of research for you and, and create a small sort of database. Give an example. If the person you're communicating with knows your business really well, obviously it's a lot easier, but it, perhaps if they don't, just one simple kind of small example uh, and then they can kind of replicate that. And it's a few minutes out of your time, but it cuts down a lot of time in the whole sort of explanation process. Right, fourth one, if your project requires knowledge about a specific field, aside from obviously giving tips to, to your assistant or the remote worker, give them time to read up and prepare as well. So uh, you may need a task doing and it's got some specific knowledge about what you do. Uh, think about the fact that they also need some, um, they need some input and information to understand your sector maybe. So either A, Give them some links where they can read up about it. B, take the time also to, to you know, invest in them in, in informing them and explaining a little bit about the sort of work you do. But certainly take into, the, into account in the time taken to complete a task that they may also have to do a bit of research in order to provide you with um, better results actually for the task you've requested. Five, as an alternative to sending large bodies of text, break things down into bullet points. I think lots of people don't even read emails when it's this huge kind of block of text. So try and keep them things short and sweet. Again, things like Asana and Trello and that are very good because they allow you to break larger projects down into small um, tasks. And this is a much more effective way of actually getting stuff done. So if you can do that and if you can bullet point stuff, it just makes the communication of it that much easier for the person who's going to be delivering the task to you. Six, in order to communicate more effectively, consider using video. These days, uh, especially I think if you're using a Mac, you're just one sort of button away on uh, a QuickTime from actually doing this kind of screen capture and you can take a video uh, and, you know, perhaps with a little bit of a voiceover in a few seconds, you can upload something to some shared space, Dropbox, G Drive, whatever it is. Uh, and you can share some really detailed and straightforward instructions, which might be a complicated sort of long word document when you start explaining what it is, and in sort of one or two minutes of video, they come across way more effectively. Don't be annoyed if the person you are delegating to remotely 
asks questions. This has to be a good thing. Maybe, as I've said this, I think probably in previous videos about delegating, not the same question 10 times, but I think asking questions is something that people need to be encouraged to do to get all the information they can to actually do a good job. And so perhaps be proactive and encourage them to ask questions if required. Do communicate via email, WhatsApp, Skype or other channels, but make sure that key communication regarding the tasks, if possible, happens through the platforms we spoke about before, Asana, Trello and these kind of things. Not everything has to happen there, but certainly key input should be there. That way it's traceable easily and quickly what has and hasn't been said. There's less sort of back and forth because the, the core information of what needs to be done is in the task management kind of platform or in the sort of project management platform. Do set up regular calls with your remote uh, staff, whether it's your virtual assistant or whether it's people working in your own organisation, um, to review the tasks that are being done, to just sort of have a check-in. It can be, you know, as simple as if you were in an office, it'd be nice to have a, you know, a five-minute kind of meeting. It doesn't need to be different if you're doing it remotely. It doesn't need to be different on WhatsApp or, or a Skype call. It can just be a quick five-minute, is everything okay? Do you have any questions? No, let's move on. But I think keeping that communication, apart from it just generally being a positive thing for the workplace, just make sure that things keep going and, and, and you nip any problems in the bud uh, and you make sure that, that people sort of continue to work in, in, the, in the right way uh, and as the project demands. Last one, tip number 10, say thank you. It doesn't really cost much. It's a really easy thing to do. Thank people for the work they've done, whether they work with you on a daily basis, whether you're outsourcing a couple of tasks, whether you're talking to someone on, on a freelancer website, say thank you, give them some positive feedback, give them constructive feedback if something should be done differently. Try and keep it though motivational, okay? Try and make sure that all the input you're giving them is going to ensure that they go on doing either A, a great job or B, a better job. So they need to be encouraged. Generally speaking, most people need to be encouraged. Right, that's it from me, really. Ten very short, swift tips. Uh, I hope they're useful. Be happy to hear, as always, from you if you have any others, either below uh, here in the comments. Also, this video will probably appear on YouTube, so you can see it there, and also it'll be on the blog post on the website. Right, I hope in a couple of weeks' time my next video will be a little bit more involved uh, and we'll have a bit more time to prepare it. But anyway, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, let me know. Thanks.